Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Randy from Harebrain, thank you so much for doing this. This is it's going to be a pretty interesting day. Um, I'm going to go right into just kind of starting my shape. We're kind of playing around with two different personalities on the head of hair this morning. And when I work on images like this, I kind of take away the bulk or the groundwork of the haircut instead of going right into a target finish. And um, I'm just elevating, if you notice my elbow going up, it's gonna give me that nice curve. I do wanna slenderize it around the face and make it smaller and actually show off these amazing cheekbones on our model Shay here and that amazing makeup by Luca. You're getting a lot of hellos, Michael. Uh, this is Randy behind the camera. I'm gonna pass on all of your questions okay. uh, to Michael. And uh, where, can you tell us where we are? We are in a new location coming in September for the new Platinum Black, a Michael Haas salon in Westwood. It's on Broxton. It's probably one of the best streets in the city because it's the widest street. And um, I'm actually really, really excited. This is about as raw as it gets here. It's such a cool space. Um, I love the space. It's uh, 3,900 square feet, two stories. It's going to have uh, an education center, which I have a feeling Hairbrain is going to be very excited about. Mm -hmm. And um, we're gonna be bringing in, uh, you know, classes from all different parts of the country and hopefully from the world. The Art of Making will be back. Uh, it will be actually a step program, which will start from the chair for the, for the new ones in the, oh, the that's industry. That's such a cool class. And um, we're gonna have a lot of fun here. I can't wait to show it off and be proud of it. I've sold everything that I own, <laughs> including my two children. And uh, we're gonna make it happen. Oh my God, this haircut's looking so cool. Can you? Uh Tell us where we're heading with this haircut. Yeah, so what we're gonna be doing, as you can see, I've sectioned out the top section here. This is going to be our, our pixie area. I'm sure you've seen a lot of these little um, quasi mullets happening around town lately. And it is actually a feeling towards that. What I'm just doing right now is I wanna shallow out the sides of her hair. Clearly, having a model with this length really makes a nice makeover. Um, I am gonna go in with a concave as I'm elevating my elbow. It is giving me that, that feeling that goes up. Um, I really want to make sure that we are going to show off her face. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to be cutting square here. And I'm going to stop at the curve of the head and the back. In the back, we're going to do something completely different. When I think about the methodologies that I use, um, I began with Sassoon. So I had 14 years of geometrics. And then, you know, all the other companies and all the other creators of new methodologies that uh, kind of came along. You know, we have a little bit of TG and Paul Mitchell and, and Paris and, you know, Trevor Sorby and we have John You Chimel. have quite a history. I was blown away when we did that interview. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. You spent time with Andy Warhol. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was my first normal moment, actually. Oh my God. That, that moment was... Uh, Kind of like the flashlight just turned on. And you flew on the trapeze when you were a kid, your I did, family? Yeah. I flew for six years. Jeez. I was dropped on my head a couple times, so the only <laughs> thing I could do for a living is be a hairdresser. You know? <laughs> so I'm elevating and I'm also pushing forward a little bit. I do want to keep some weight in the back. The outcome of the haircut is really kind of a mystery right now. I know the idea that I want to have and I know how I want to finish it. So you're gonna let it talk to you a little bit? A little bit, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I don't like the term. I, yep. I, I don't like what that says. I don't mm -hmm. like what that means. Um, it's a little weird to me. Mm -hmm. But, I, I, but I, I know that all of us understand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like how I was talking about me traveling when I was a kid. You know, the language of hair is really a non-translatable language. We all speak it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, when we travel around the world, working with teams and working on fashion shows and designers and whatever, once it comes to you know, fashion and design, there's a, there's a classic basic knowledge that I 
think most people have that actually study and are really deep into the craft. And we don't have to say anything. You know, just the, the mental collaboration and then allowing your hands to see where you're going. We're getting so many hellos. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, thanks for joining. Oh. I have to be honest, this is my first Facebook Live. How am I doing, Randy? I'm doing awesome. <laughs> so, if you guys are interested in studying and learning, uh, September will hopefully be the, the beginning date. Also, I am building a brand new team here. Um, and I will have what we normally do with fashion shows. I'm actually going to be having a casting call for hairdressers. Oh, amazing. And uh, it's going to be done on a on a day that's going to be clearly one of our days off. And, um, yep. I am a triple th threat hairdresser, so I do haircut, color, and styling. And photography. And photography, That makes you a um, serious today. Yeah, I'm actually shooting Naha in, uh, in about two, three weeks, actually. I'm very excited about that. We're actually so you're getting, you're getting hellos from India, from Napa Valley, uh, the Philippines, um, there were a lot more. I just wow, Napa, in, India. Hello, India. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Ah, I'm so excited. I'm standing beside myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love India. I was there a long time ago. Ah, uh, Bombay. Oh wow. Yeah, amazing. Fantastic food. And Napa, mm -hmm. my little. Got Buffalo. Drinking hideaway. Buffalo. How's your weather, man? Are you guys in a heat wave or what? God. So once yeah, again, they're either I'm, in a heat wave or a snowstorm. Exactly right. So I, as you can see, I am kind of elevating. My elevation comes from my elbow. My fingers are the same. The elbow actually moves into the concave element. Instead of moving my hands this way and getting a lazy wrist, um, the movement and the control of both sides being identical is really in the body language that we work with. The dance. And now we're getting to the round of the head. So I want to make sure that. Now are you pulling that straight I'm off the it round? Straight off, yeah. and then also just a tad forward. Okay, cool. I want to start exposing the face. Our finish is actually what's going to expose this haircut. Once we get to the top, we are going to go quite short, but it will not be a mullet. I don't like the name. I don't like what it looks like. I always like the, I like the new updated versions. Mm -hmm. I think they're beautiful. Okay, so now we have finished these two side sections. I'm gonna pull them out of the way. Um, Steve is, Steve-o is asking, uh, why do you elevate the hair to cut this? Um, because I wanna slenderize what's happening around the face. You know, she has long hair, clearly. I have not addressed the length yet. Mm -hmm. There will be some length on the main part of the hair, but the elevation actually allows me to place weight where I want on the head. Does that answer your question, Steve-O? Mm -hmm. I think it did. A little more. So uh, Karen is asking if Brentwood is your hood. It is my hood. <laughs> um, actually, my hood's really kind of like late night downtown around three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and Carrie, uh, <laughs> Carrie is saying uh, she's from Prince George, Canada, and she's just saying hello, Michael. Oh, hello, Prince George. And then good evening from the UK. That's Sarah. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, we get people from all over. Yeah, I used to live in. Uh, I used to live in Canada. I lived in Canada when I came from Germany. I was. Oh, wow. I didn't have a passport. I was under my mother's passport. I was too young. So here, just to kind of elaborate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to elevate the comb and bring my guide. I'm going to keep the hair at an angle but I'm going to elevate here because I want to bring some weight right over the occipital and I'm going to cut to my second knuckle and I'm going to drop out the length. And as you can see, what that does is it gives this beautiful waterfall of hair and it allows me to not touch the weight, but if I push into the occipital, you'll see where the volume is going to be. Yeah, cool. Okay? Um, yeah, I lived in Edmonton, Alberta for two years and then we came down here. And your mother is from Berlin. My mother's from Berlin. My father was born in Bologna, Italy. Oh, wow. And um, 
he had, uh, when we, when my mother remarried and we came to the States, um, my father decided to open up a standing circus, which means that it's there all year long, in Madrid. Oh, wow. And uh, hey, he, had, uh, he had run that circus until he passed away last year. Wow. Yeah, very, very strong, very creative man. I think I have my hands from him. He used to build everything. So you can see on the profile how nicely that sits. Oh, yeah. And what we'll do on the detail on the finish, my belief is you cannot finish a haircut wet. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You'll never see the line. You'll never see the shape or the graphics. So for me, I come in right underneath the occipital, lift it up, elevate identically to the previous guide. You can make this a traveling, a stationary, or an over-directional guide. In okay. this case, I'm actually doing a stationary guide because I want to build some weight behind the mastoid process, which is the bone behind the ear, which I think is very sexy. Go to the second knuckle, absolute disconnection, as you can see, and as this comes down, it blends in perfectly. Amazing. Um, so Vero is saying, uh, Vero is from Mexico. I'm just saying it's so nice to uh, see you work. Thank you. Um, Ella, or Ia, um, is asking, when styled at the end, will this have a feathered look? Um, I am going to do some detail work with some point cutting mm -hmm. and some channel cutting. Um, I think that how we finish a haircut is really our personality and our signature. So yes, there will be some detail work that will make each haircut, each client, each stylist have their own personality on that head. And I think that's what makes all of us keep our clients, isn't it? Yeah. How we finish hair. Uh, Melissa is asking, how did you uh, figure this design out? Um, I have that kind of mind. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I went so through... So you can picture it. Yeah, I went through Shay's haircut probably about 20 times in the last two weeks. You know, how I want to approach it, especially for Hairbrained Live. And, or Facebook Live. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, what am I going to do that's going to make sense? What am I going to do that's going to be creative enough to be creative? And what am I going to do that's actually going to sell in the chair for the general public? And I always look at that, you know, I can go, we can all do red, white, and blue mohawks, but how is this model going to step out of the box? Shay wanted to have something that was new, something that was a bit more dangerous, she's exciting. I didn't want to have, you know, a 12 year old sitting in my chair and, and create this peacock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what I do want to do is I want to show that no matter how we cut wet, we can always finish it in the chair to make financial gain. Mm. And I think that's what's really important. And as you can see how this is shaping up, it's actually becoming quite pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm not addressing yeah. the length. I don't really care about the length on most haircuts until the finish, so I can put my frame around the artwork. Um, besides that, cutting for length, I think, is a waste of time. You know, you have clients coming in, they want two inches off. Two inches doesn't mean anything to me. It really, it never has. And I think, I think inches is a man thing, and they're always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carrie saying you're a rockin' hair stylist. Love your work. Thank you. Um, Linda says hello from uh, Champagne in uh, or hello, Linda Champagne in Salem, New Hampshire. Wow. Um, Melissa says it's mind blowing to see this process. Um, Tina says hi from uh, PEI Canada. Thank you. Um, we have somebody who just joined asking uh, Marvin, um, saying, uh, wh what, what do you call this kind of a hairstyle? I would say it's a mix of a, of a pixie shag. Okay. A long, a long pixie shag. I cool. think that would be pretty good for it. Um, Jacob's just so disconnected. Yep. Um, what's going to keep it unique and what's going to keep it really working on the street is not only the disconnection, but also the elevation that's gonna keep weight where I want it or where I don't want it. If you notice the back right now, you can actually see the elevation is actually going into a V or a U. So because I had the um, stationary guide, now I can see that my sides are completely disconnected from whatever length was created with that. I don't care right now. That's not, that's not my main concern. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just re-wet a little bit. I'm not using actual just water. <coughs> I'm using um, Imi from Wella Professionals. I put in a little bit of the Perfect Me, which is a beautiful smoothing cream and also protects color and, um, and your cuticle. And I mix that because I like to have a cutting tool that's gonna allow my fingers to slip through the hair 
instead of stuttering when the hair gets dry or compromised like these ends might be. Um, so that really sets me up for success for the haircut. You're getting so many wows and hellos and I can't pass them all on. Apologize oh, for that. Why not? Uh, Don, Donna said, um, shags are uni universally great. Um, uh, Sharon is saying, I learn and process your methods better than any other. Thank you for sharing your gift and your skill. Oh, thank you very much, Sharon. And then Mike, uh, Daniel Gricko is saying, uh, hey, Michael, looking forward to seeing you again at New York Fashion Week. As always, a pleasure working with you, my friend. Me as well. I can't wait to see you. So I'm gonna show you one of the most difficult parts of this haircut. You're really gonna to have to make sure that the client knows what you're doing. This is the biggest step of all. And thank you very much for coming. That'll be about $12,000. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna start working on my front. I do wanna give Shay bangs. Um, I have a tendency to call bangs kind of more like a China doll. Mm -hmm. So on Shay, I'm gonna do a cross between that and uh, a fringe. A fringe is much lighter. It's a little airier. But when I notice the size of her forehead, it's a bit petite. So I want to I want to play with this in a raw form and leave it a little bit longer. But I also want to take the top short. Now I'm also going to incorporate some of the sections that we've already cut in this section on top, which I will be cutting square, and I will be not over directing. I'll actually tr I'll actually travel forward until the length suits me. So when I make my decision on how I feel about the haircut, um, then we'll move forward. So I'm going to section I'm going to obviously part in the center. Let's take a look at where we go. Sharon's here. passing on a compliment to the model, saying that she's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Are you excited for a new haircut? I am. I'm very much looking You're forward to it. You're ready for this. <laughs> ready to show it off. Okay. Shay came in and she says, you can do whatever you want. I'm like, okay, you're hired. <laughs> Who's gonna argue with that, right? Yeah. I'm gonna section off at the crest of the head. Okay, the crest is actually, if you look at your old history class, you'll see that through the globe on the teacher's desk was the North Pole and the South Pole. So for me, the crest is right at the tip of that section. This is where we make our little, our little woodstock flowers and whatever else we do, and then the hair kind of spans around it. That's kind of the direction, but I really want to give her something that's going to draw more attention. So I'm going to come in quite square here. I'm going to elevate straight up. Is that a good angle for you, Randy? Yeah, Should I'm I turn, her, turn her just a little bit this way? Yeah. There you go. That's so I'm going to pull this straight up. I'm going to keep my sectioning clean. Now notice here, this is actually where my shortest piece is in the back of the head. Okay. This seems to be very happy for me. I feel really good about this length. So I'm actually going to guide that. I'm visually going to guide that. I'm not one to drag sections like this for this type of work from one area to another. And clearly, you know, just clean that up. Take it quite tight. Um, I love using shorter blades. It gives me complete finger control and it really makes the blade feel like it's an extension of my fingers. Um, Bitsutani scissors actually takes care of me for this because I'm using a right-handed blade as many of you can probably see I am left-handed my first year of haircutting at Sassoon I was right-handed and then one of my mentors there said you look very awkward he says why don't you move your scissors to your left hand and all of a sudden I was Michael Haas it was amazing it's crazy but what the Mitsutani is kind enough to do for me in Japan is they give me a right-handed blade and then everything from the axis here back is left-handed. Huh. So they literally take off the right-handed the right-handed handle and put in there a very, very, very nice left-handed handle for me. Which is thank you, Kiyoshi. Mm -hmm. I always like going over my top sections twice, even though I'm going to destroy them, but it just keeps a really nice clean element. Next section. I am going to move forward to just about the size of the recession. I want to keep this for the bang area, and I don't want to include it here, so it will be another disconnection. I 
I usually get to about 90% finished and then I dry the hair and then the rest of the shape is designed for feeling. Keeping the hair nice and controlled. Very, very nice. Clean sections, clean cuts. You know, really have a nice GPS of where you're going. And I really don't start looking at it until I complete my section so I, I don't change my mind too much, which I have a tendency to do drastically. Once again, I want to keep the section wide enough for my fingers. As I travel to the center of the head, you're going to notice that the section is going to be wider than my fingers. And there's a trick that I have to include the section and make it much smaller in width. And what that is, we'll do that right now, I'm going to pull it into shape. I'm going to take my comb and come from the outside and cross over to the other side. Pick it up. And I'm going to do the same thing from the opposite side. I'm going to come in, reduce the width, come in, and now notice how much thinner that section is. And then I'll remove the weight. What that way is I don't have to do two sections on both sides of the head and I get this beautiful little valley of shortness that cascades over the top. So smart. You know, it's funny, we see hair shows and, you know, events around the world and there's so much fantastic talent and artwork, you know, and we come up with every year there's a new, a new brand and a new, a new tool and a new idea. I think if we stick to what we do best as designers, hair designers, and just make our process a little easier for ourselves, and then share that process, I think our recognition will escalate dramatically mm. as really good hairdressers. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Just make it run smoother. So here I am on my last section. Just getting rid of some of that hair. You feeling a little less weight on your head there? I do. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Okay, so you can eat meat tonight. You can gain some weight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, also uh, I want to get into the color a little bit, obviously. Um, well, it is the color of choice for me. Uh, it's something that I've, I've used for many, 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 many years. I just started working with Wella uh, Professional for uh, I think about seven years now as a top artist. And um, I believe whatever color you use and whatever we work with, you know, we can pretty much sell anything. But what is most important is the consistency of control, professional design, and is the company motivated to create new ideas as time goes along? You know, and once again, yeah, we do have a lot of choices. We really do. Um, Carol Ann is asking, what's the difference between uh, this technique and flat layers? Um, flat layers, that's a good question. Um, it's just, as you notice, you know, I am now going to go back this way, doing a few, a little bit more. I'm playing around more with the shape and the disconnection of shapes. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at the, you know, the elements of square, round, uh, triangle, I do work that into my, into my designs. But what I'm really doing is, as I'm taking the weight off the hair, my technique might change because I'm exposing less weight on the human skull. And with that, um, it helps me design the hair just for her. Cool. Um, how many, uh, oh, sorry, wondering how you would alter this for blonde hair, um, just because of the nature of blonde hair showing everything. Mm -hmm. I would take much smaller sections. So much smaller sections. Much smaller sections. Okay. I would probably also color afterwards. Mm. I, would, I would usually put my hair cut in and then color around the haircut. And then Megan's asking, uh, or sorry, Tramper is asking, what's your natural hair color? Uh, <laughs> I'm brunette, but I've been going with blonde highlights for a very long time. Okay. Cool. A little bit of gray. A little bit of gray. <laughs> yeah, she's about a level five, six, Ash. And um, 
we decided to go in with a level seven and an eight. We did an eight on top. We did a seven on the bottom. Clearly her, uh, her highlights were only partial, so they were only on top. And um, I decided to use the creativity of color for that pre-lightened hair. Um, also looking at the compromisation of some of the ends, which, you know, thank God we are taking them off. Um, yeah. Um, Christine um, is just saying that she likes the flexibility of your comb, and she also likes to use a light-colored comb and dark hair. I mm -hmm. wanted to know the brand. Uh, this brand actually is YS Park, uh, which is one of my go-tos for everything. I do have this one as well, which is a uh, less expensive brand, but it also curves a little more. YS Park does not burn under heat for your hot tools. Mm. This one will melt. Okay. Okay? Cool. So I actually use the more flexible one for barbering, which I also have YS Parks. Um, but, you know, I'm, I have the privilege going through the days that I've been doing hair, and I can afford the best, and that's just the way I work. I don't live paycheck to paycheck anymore, thank God. So I'm gonna go in very, very freehand just to feel where I wanna go with this shape. If there's, you know, there's some compromised hair here on the cuticle hair, don't need it, get rid of it. I'm not a believer in having a client or a model or anyone work around a problematic type of hair. You know, sometimes you'll see on the hairline here the little bounce of a cowlick. I have been known to take that down to the bone and get rid of it, and it actually makes the bangs close up. So if it's not needed, don't use it. Wow, that's looking so nice. She's got a great face, doesn't mm -hmm. she? She smiles too much for my taste. <laughs> I like people to be a little more unapproachable. <laughs> So I'm just playing and I'm flirting with the length right now. I'm, I'm not, you know, clearly haircuts like these are not haircuts where we have linear hair all the time. I'm, I'm very, very happy to say that I think that part of our world is gone, at least for this part of, of the decade. Um, you know, having the privilege of working from the 70s all the, way, uh, all the way into now, I've seen a lot of different trends and I've seen a lot of different, I call them feelings. I don't like trends. Mm -hmm. Trendy is, is a little bit too, um, I don't know, too novice, I suppose. Let's turn her this Let's way. Sure, yeah. And um, so for me, it's kind of, you know, we're, we're in this business because we love doing hair. Well, what do we love about it? Have you ever asked yourself that? You know, I mean, what is it? Oh, I want to make people pretty. I like making people happy. That's great. That's terrific. But, you know, when I think about putting designs on a, on a human head, the responsibility behind it, Know your stuff. Mm -hmm. Study. Jesse you know? Gaines says, beautiful work, Michael. Thank you very much, Jesse. And uh, Megan has a question. Uh, does the model have natural wave? Well, the natural wave she has does not go any further than this. She does have a bump on top of her head mm -hmm. because of the gray factor, which is a different texture. Mm -hmm. So it does pop up a little bit. And being that her face is very petite, it has a tendency to elongate the head even more. Mm -hmm. Now, what's happening is because I'm taking it short, I want that to pop for the style design, mm -hmm. but also the shortness in here is gonna give her a bit more width, oh, and fine. then we'll slender her back down again. Uh, you like that? Mm -hmm. So she could literally you know, wash one day, sleep for three days at Burning Man, and still look that good. <laughs> you know? Yeah, some of these pieces, you know? And the funny thing is, is yes, I do do geometric haircuts. You know, I'm a Sassoon, as I worked for the man for glorious, glorious amounts of years. In the days when we didn't dress like pirates, we were all wearing three-piece suits. You know? <laughs> now we can, you know, pretty much everything goes. But I think we're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys like the color, because I'm crazy about it. Mm -hmm. You're getting so many emojis. Oh, good. <laughs> emojis are always a good sign. <laughs> I'm too busy to talk to you, but here's this. <laughs> <laughs> I think education has taken such a different turn, you know, with all this, you know, education was never on a piece of glass. It was always in person. There was mm -hmm. always a handshake and a, and a thank you and a graciousness in what we do. And I think that, um, you know, when you guys actually meet the people that you've emojied, 
have the consideration, the respect, and the professionalism to really appreciate mm -hmm. that they've helped you in your career. I tell you honestly, if it wasn't for my mentors, we wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, I always respond. The same with my team. Billy from the salon is here today with us. She's a, one of our assistants, doing incredibly, incredibly, actually more scary well. And Thanks, um, Bruce, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was. Uh, it's amazing how fast kids learn now, huh? Oh yeah. Oh my God, it's scary. They're just exposed. But what's cool is that they don't always get it right when they're learning, which really creates new art. Mm -hmm. Which is my, I love that. You know, Billy and some of the other assistants at the salon go, "Oh God, I, I didn't do this. Like, this is awesome. This is great. We can. There's something there. Let's elaborate on it. You know, we have a." We have kind of an education. Great ideas, right? Like, yeah. maybe don't know how to get them out yet. Yeah. But. We have an education uh, board in one of our hallways where anybody can write anything they want, requests. Oh, oh that's smart. Doing pictures with, um, you know, if they want to do a photo shoot. Marin is asking, how do you feel about using a razor on this type of haircut? You know, that's not a bad idea. I actually mm -hmm. brought one because I changed my mind a lot. I mm -hmm. didn't know whether I was going to Ginsu this haircut or actually use blades. but. Um, the only thing to be careful about is when you do get to the ends and if you do promise length, make sure that the hair is not as compromised on what we just cut mm -hmm. because a razor will actually shred this mm -hmm. instead of giving it a little bit of meat on the ends. Mm -hmm. But that's a really good question and I, I would guess if Shay had a little thicker hair, I would probably be all for that, especially mm -hmm. for the texture. Oh, this is looking so good. Oh my God, you're so cute. Okay, <laughs> I can say that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, a little bit more perfect me and some water. Um, Jeremy Hickson is asking, uh, when doing a wild, fun haircut like this, what advice would you give a hairdresser that's scared to step outside the box? You're in the perfect place. Okay, it's step out of the box and then what do you do when you're out there? Take the box with you. You know, the whole idea about doing something, have I done this haircut before? No, I haven't. And I'm excited about it because mm -hmm. if I would have done a, a, a commercial hairstyle on Shay, she would look like a commercial person. Mm -hmm. And from her personality and the talking that we did, she's not. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put myself in that round. And you know what? It also allows me to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, for example, this section here in the back of the head, if I have a color, I will take a different hair color or a different tone and I'll put it in the back of the head for a client with highlights or maybe low lights or even just a base color. I want to see what I want to do with her color the next time I see her. That's my little test to see what it looks like. They don't even know it's there. Uh, here's a compliment for you. Midgey says, it suits the model perfectly. I'm obsessed. Aww. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Thank you for that. I'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> so now, we have our softer feeling, what I want to do now is I want to really open this up just a little bit. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to come in, do my sectioning. Now watch, I'm going to come in. This would be dead center. Okay, now I don't know if that her hair actually parts there. Sometimes we have clients say, my hair always splits back here. Well, that's because we're cutting our shapes with dead center. If I come in and look at natural center, I'm going to take my fingers below the occipital and push up. That is where natural center is. And if you mm -hmm. notice, it's just a little bit off, and it's always off on the hair that has the least amount of density. Mm. So the more density is going to be on this side. So if I now take my center cutting and actually make this the center, her hair will never split. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to come in and do something very basic. I'm going to come right above the occipital. I can actually take her head. Take a look where it's coming. It's beautiful head structure, beautiful round bone right here. And I'm gonna come in just above the occipital and take that hair away from the top of the ear. This is going to now be my weight removal to expose this top part. And then we're gonna blow her dry and do some detail. Nice clean sections once again. Sectioning is very important. It's gonna give you a guideline. But don't disallow your own methodology to come through the world. It's really important. You gotta be you, you know? Just because somebody doesn't like it doesn't mean they got taste. Opinions vary. And one thing that's worked for me is somebody gives you an opinion, all you have to do is look at them and give them a half a smile. It's scary as hell, but they go, they go with it. 
So I'm going to elevate now completely horizontal, even with her head tipped forward. This is very important. And I want to hollow out that area, and I don't want to take a lot of hair out because I want, the, I want more of a feeling instead of a, another disconnection. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to grab the hair, it's nice and moist, I'm going to slide my blade, and just barely, this is where that question was with the razor, this would be a good place for it. But as you can see, it's just bringing up a little bit of flavor just to start exposing that. If I'm not happy about it, I can actually go shorter on her and just come in and hollow that little bit out. If you take too much out, yes, of course, her ends are going to be too weak. But I think for the way that this is working, I'm very, very content with this. And you can see how much hair came out on that. But here's all So if this length. pulls it all, uh, then it means your scissors are dull. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I get my blade sharpened about three times, uh, or every three months, rather. And it really does keep me in check. You know, it makes sure that I can literally raise her. Now here I went into a little bit of a V, all right? So that would take care of that section. My two sections over the mastoid process, I wanna be more careful because we're missing half the hairline, right? Mm -hmm. The hairline doesn't come down this way. We're missing all this hair. So here I wanna elevate even higher and I wanna actually pull out to that corner where the square haircut would be. Here and here, I'm now gonna approach my corner once again. And here I want to be a little more gentle. I want to actually take care more here than here. So here I'm just going to come in, I'm going to draw that line down just a little bit. And that's going to give me a little bit of support for that piece that I built on top. Jeremy Hickson's asking if you ever uh, go to Texas to teach. I do, if I'm invited. So um, the best thing would be for him to connect with you on you, your website or on absolutely. Instagram? Absolutely. You can go to um, you can go Instagram, which is M M H two A's S E. Don't put in two S's. There's no ass in Haas. <laughs> and you can also go to MichaelMHaas.com, which will turn you on to my um, email, which is um, the Art of Making. Dot T A O M, as in Michael, at Gmail. travel all over the world teaching, and that would be the best way to get in touch with me. I just want to take a look at what I have on both pieces and make sure there's some uniformity, and I will actually take my wide teeth and just push up a little bit at an angle just to pop that hair up, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that, so we're going to leave that alone. We might address it again when it's, when it's dry. Now, I'm going to take another piece. I don't want to connect it. And here, I just want to see where we are as far as the length. I'm going to come and do just a little bit more of that. I'm going to pull it right over that corner where the square would be. And once again, you can see the ends are actually angled in a V. And I'm going to come in and just take a little bit of that weight out right here on both sides. Always using my wide teeth for tangles and my fine teeth for pulling the hair out. There we go. Yes, you can channel cut this. You can point cut this. I prefer not to do it when it's wet because I have less control. We are all control freaks. I think we need to own that. And I think for right now, with a blow dry, I think we're pretty cool. Such a great shape. And you can see how nicely this kept the back of her head, mm -hmm. where we're going to be building this little, you can hide money in there if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. All right, let's blow it out. Before I start, I'm going to go in with a little bit of thermal image which is from, uh, from Wella. We're gonna go in with a little bit of this to protect from the heat, especially on those little fragile ends that are still left, which I have not taken down yet. And a little bit on this one. Right there. Thank you. It's actually a vest brush. Another YS Park miracle. I love YS Park. 
I have actually the first whitest parts. And it's so funny, when I, when I work on, this, on set or I work with other hairdressers, they always say, oh my god, you got one of the originals. It's like, yeah, don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> So the drawing of this, if the client actually sees me doing this, she's gonna say, is this what I do? I'm gonna say, absolutely. The one thing about my work that I like to do is I like to straighten the hair so I can actually see my connections and disconnections and make sure that whatever line work is supposed to be where it's supposed to be. Um, there was a question earlier about doing this cut on a blonde. I would definitely make sure that I straighten it, flat iron it, and then go back and put texture in because I want to make sure that that haircut is perfect. And you know, your hands are your best tool. So going in and getting the root base covered a little bit, taking care of it, I can start seeing what this haircut is gonna do for me when it's dry and I can also start seeing where the volume's gonna be where the definition of design is gonna be, where do I really wanna bring the attention to, and it'll kind of guide me how I'm going to approach the completion and the finish finish. You know, building a, a haircut is kind of like building a house. There's finish, which allows you to go in and inspect, but you can't live in it until it's finish finish. So we wanna kind of get there with the haircut. And of course, you know, that's when the, the color starts exposing itself a little bit, which I get really excited about. Apparently, so do you. <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, comment. I'm dying to see it. <laughs> that's the great thing about being in this space. There's no mirrors for anybody to yeah. complain about. <laughs> yeah. It was like that one special client where you've spent an hour and a half whittling away. <laughs> you pulled out everything that you've ever learned. And she looks in the mirror and she kind of slightly turns her head and goes, Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. This is very, very happy hair right now, taking off all that length and that weight. Um, you know, bringing in a little more health to the ends. I think, you know, we do so much color work in the salon every day, and what we do for fashion and design, and you know, just making money and all that, we really have a tendency to, to do too much of what the client is expecting from a service without really educating her with why that service won't work for the future because you can't change your hair because of the compromised hair. So for me, I work extremely seasonally. You know, right now I'm working to the middle of summer. So the clients that are coming in at the end of, uh, the end of June, last week in June, all of July are going to get something that's gonna take them through August. And as we get into August, the highlights will be toned with a secondary and, and uh, tertiary color to bring it back down to a little bit deeper and a little darker, taking away from the bleach blonde. And the, the, the darker pieces will start getting a little chestnut, taking them, you know, we don't think really a lot about how women change their makeup and their clothes. And, you know, unfortunately in LA, you know, we don't have weather, we have a condition, so everybody's always blonde, you know, <laughs> but, um, I like to make my work shine no matter where they go, and I definitely want to stay up in fashion. It's extremely important, especially for you folks out there that are brand new to the industry. Please educate yourself on two or three of your favorite fashion designers, not on this continent. And also, two or three iconic hairdressers 
that will help guide you. And the way that you see that is by somebody that scares the hell out of you. And research them. Grab a doll head, grab a, grab a model, and just do something. It doesn't matter what. The only way that you're going to succeed is by getting out of the area where you feel you need somebody's permission to make you feel that you're okay. It's not up to anybody but you. Joey asked, would this uh, haircut work on a round shape, or a round face? Sure it would. That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, I actually don't work, I work more with bone structure than I do with roundness and not roundness or triangular or whatever. I think, I think our industry is very, very strong in that and I, I appreciate it and I work with it. But that to me is not always the end all to end all. So, Whoa. what's that? She looks like somebody famous. Oh, good. <laughs> I like that. Oh, yes, I'm using my GHD iron. It always has music for me. Excellent hot tools. They, they light up in just a couple of seconds, and it makes my job easier. I don't have to keep burning electricity all the time. So I'm going to come in and just take care of those ends a little bit, because I want a little bit more visual control. Not necessarily styling control. I actually like the texture of her hair. And I would probably suggest she lets it dry naturally. With a little bit of styling product to control the health elements. And um, I can already see what I want to do as far as the length is concerned. And where we are as far as the, uh, the feeling of the haircut. So I'm going to take more length off. And take out a bit more weight here and there. And then we're just gonna let it run. Right now, the haircut is still extremely raw. But I like that. It lets me see what the hair really wants to do for her. And it also teaches me how I'm gonna educate her with what she's gonna need for take-home products to get a similar look. In my salon, we actually teach clients how to do their hair. They bring in all their own stuff. And we basically give them a blow-dry appointment. And we go ahead and teach them how to do their hair. We actually don't touch the hair. It's just a, it's a guidance. It's, very, it's actually quite funny. You know, we have session kits, they have paper or plastic. Love it. Fantastic. <laughs> I think the top one is going to leave alone. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's finish that up. So I'm going to approach the front first. This is going to give me my guide. Let me turn her around for you. Before we move on, Jeremy's just asking how you like the GHD blow dryer. He, he's a I do. fan. Yeah, I do. I think GHD well, is an amazing company. They've, they've kind of taken the, the mystery out of how hot do tools get and how hot do tools need to be. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I like that. So here I'm just going to come in very, very rough just to give a lit, not a blending, but just an outline of things that still don't work for me. And then. I'm gonna bounce my blade with my finger just to get those pieces that we always like seeing in photo shoots that kind of just, you know, mm. just come out a little bit. Kind of like that. And I'm gonna do it on her length as well. It's too long, don't like it. And I'm gonna start where my last disconnection is and I'm gonna start bouncing right here. Okay, I like that better. I feel better about it. You know, the thing about it is, is your, your hands will see what your eyes will feel mm. while your brain is actually touching the idea of a new design. And once you have that down, then you're a hairdresser. And you can follow the yellow brick road. Oh, what kind of... Uh Carol Ann is asking, what kind of tension are you using when you bounce through the hair? When I bounce the tension that I'm using here, this hand is actually pulling the hair towards me mm. so that I don't have to open and close. I believe sometimes when we open and close, there's hair that gets caught here and it actually starts ripping. Mm -hmm. And if we close it too far, it actually cuts. Mm -hmm. I want it to glide. And by gliding and pulling forward, I'm actually removing the hair that I want to remove. Okay, cool. Thanks. Side. Turn you just a little bit. Clean this up a little bit right here. 
And yeah, I mean, of course, you know, is this going to be finished? No, it's not. There's going to be more shortness and more pieces and more this and more that. Um, it has to be. Is this one of those haircuts that's hard to know when to when to stop? stop? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh god, I can I can whittle away. I, I'll see you next week. You can come and finish this whole thing. You know. And the funny thing is, is it's sometimes it's just millimeters. Yeah. You know that that blonde question once again going back to that. Oh my god, you got blonde hair and you're doing scissor over comb. You know, scissor over comb is the only technique you can't look cool doing because it's just so mental. You know. But I do like what's happening here. See, that feels good. It's kind of a kind of a Stevie Nicks Joan Jet kind of a thing going on here. You know? mm -hmm. For those of you who are less than twelve years old, you won't know who that is. Yeah. Google it. Okay, now sides, and I'm literally going to come in. I'm going to take a section from behind the mastoid, bring it to the temple area. I'm going to take this entire section. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna leave plenty of space in my fingers, there's a couple of pieces we missed, and I'm just gonna come in and soften that up. I am going in at an angle. I don't believe that point cutting is supposed to take off length, only weight. In this case, I'm actually putting in a little bit of cutting damage, as I call it. And that feels much better. This was a technique I learned from the famous Jean Chakov in the 70s, who uh, was a very famous Beverly Hills hairdresser, kind of a hairdresser to the stars, and was uh, Hugh Hefner's best friend. And I worked, had the privilege of working with him on his styling designs that were incredibly unorthodox. But I always get excited when somebody's just going in there and just doing something that nobody's doing. Mm. You know, and it's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta do that. You know? Like I said in the other, you know, we're all thieves. We want to take ideas and, mm -hmm. you know, then become famous. Like, look what I did. This is awesome. I'm so good. In the back, I'm not happy with the way this is now. This is where I'm going to approach a little bit of the length, but I'm not really going to make a big statement out of it. So I am going to go ahead and just cut some of that out. Very, very free, very organic very off the wall. But I think what's going to happen mm. is as we pull this around, you know, I'll come in and just touch the ends just to make them look a little bit like they were supposed to be there. Okay. I'm going to take that section there in the center of the head, so between the two balance points of the neck. Just kind of cross into that. There's my section. Clean that up a little bit. That was somebody's stomach, wasn't it? Wasn't that, was that not you? Jeremy says he wants to be like Michael Hawes when he grows up. You know what? I want to be like Michael Hawes when I grow up. Let me tell you. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I guess I think what makes it. You know, it's funny. I've, I've worked for a very long time. Actually, this this October I'll be doing this for forty nine years. Can you believe that? Um, but to be quite honest, it wasn't until the last twenty where I really found the fact that I'm okay. You know, I, I, I've got skills, I can, I can play with them or not, I can work with them or not, it's all up to me, and um, you know, don't be afraid of it, you gotta take those shots, you know. I don't think a mannequin head really works for me as, as well, I, I need to have a live model, I need to have a human being with, you know, with, with a life, with a life yeah. you know, something, a scalp that breathes, you know, an, an attitude that I can feel good about, this is still too heavy for me, I'm gonna... Definitely make this Michael right here. This is going to definitely be a little bit better for me. And then we'll address the sides where these guys are. Here I'm going in. I just want to soften it first. I'm going to come back in, go very, very deep. And I'm just going to come in on the top. Let me turn this for you, Randy. Mm -hmm. And get more light on it. Mm -hmm. Bend your head down just a slight. And I'm just going to come in and point into it to remove weight. I like the length. I just want to come in and just touch it. Just touch it. I kind of feel like 
Bob Ross. And I'm like, I just want to just touch, just touch it. I didn't want to say anything, but I know. a couple of people I know, mentioned weird. that. Yeah. Everybody's Googling Bob Ross right now. It's like, oh my God, he's got an afro. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. it's just like a, a meditative kind yeah, of voice. Yeah, and you know, it's like a happy just, little tree. Just a happy little cut right here. Just to, just to make it just... Blow, Don't make me laugh. Blow, in, blow in the wind. Oh, we got to have fun. Come on, we're everywhere. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is like uh, really exciting for me to do, and and working with Randy and Hairbrain has always uh, been a blessing. I think I think Randy and I met when you were pretty much at the beginning of your career. Yeah, definitely. I was the first hairdresser he met that didn't spray hairspray from stage onto his camera. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm gonna come in on the side now. I'm gonna just go very quickly to finish this off. There's a few pieces I just want to touch, and then I'm gonna come in and do a little channel cutting just because I feel like it. Just come in and slide that through there a little bit. Clearly, there's that disconnection, which I happen to like a lot. The cool thing about this haircut, or haircuts like this, so I'm gonna show you this in a second. If you pull her hair back, okay, this is a very, very oh, cool. European thing that people are doing right now in Paris and Milan, parts of, parts of Japan. You know, they, can, they have pieces, and I think there's some fun. Fine. So I'm just gonna keep pulling this through. Very raw haircut, you know. If you have geometrics behind this, you'll be disappointed. But the pleasure of this haircut, and I think the finish. I think when I worked uh, when, a long time ago, I studied with John Shahag, and he had a very, very interesting and a very unique way of cutting hair dry. I learned a lot of dry techniques with John, and uh, an amazing person. But he had a he had a flair, he's, you know. His, oh, his, Sahag his, was amazing. My personality is your hair. Mm. And I thought, geez, that's, how do I make that mine? And he says, just cut hair as well as I do. Mm. <laughs> I go, okay. In here, I'm just gonna come in and just take a little bit of that. You know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna remove my design, but I definitely just wanna shatter it up just a little bit more and then we'll style her out. How are we on time, Randy? We're good. Yeah? I'm going to take you there. Take as long as you want. Well, I do have a job, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I do need my donut. I need my donut, my coffee. I remember I was teaching a class in the Midwest, and I remember them asking, like, so when we order lunch, what would you like? I said, a bottle of smart water and a donut. <laughs> that, would be my, that would be my go-to. So whoever wanted me in Texas, I'm cheap, but I'm, I'm not cheap, but I can't be bought. Yeah. <laughs> Shadow those ends a little bit more, take off some of that unwanted. And then how do I feel about the whole feeling? Am I am I feeling comfortable? Am I feeling just about right? And I am. I kinda like what I did here today. Everybody's loving it. I'm so glad. I really hope you guys, you know, got something out of this and you can have some fun with this. And yes, you know, the funny thing about it is, is I look at techniques in cutting today as short, medium, and long. I don't think that there's any haircut that you are doing where you can't put that on somebody longer or shorter mm. and get a different feeling. And really, when you think about the dynamics of haircutting, that's pretty much really all it is. How does that fit on the human being? And how good do they feel wearing it? And how good do I feel that they're actually showing it off? You know, I look at every head waiting for a frame to hang at the Getty. Mm. You know, and if I have that, that's, that's pretty cool. So uh, Jeremy was uh, loving your cape. Yes. Uh, Jeremy, that's his salon name. Yeah, it's just um, spelled backwards. Yep. So when the clients look in the mirror, they can read my salon name right direction. He's, he's wondering if you'd sell him one. If I would sell him one? Yeah. Jeremy, we're going to have to meet. Yeah. Jeremy, where are you? He, he should come and work at your salon, then he'd get I one. I think he then. should. He <laughs> would get one for free. Yeah. Do we know where Jeremy's from? Yeah, I think he's, uh, I think he's in Texas. Ah, another Texan. They have some great hair in Texas. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to do this because I'm going to feel really good about it. 
I'm going to give her a Dior bang. And this is a technique that I worked with many, many years ago in Amsterdam. And uh, what it does is it actually allows the hair to part and section this way a little bit. So what I'm going to do quickly, just soften that with a little bit of moisture. Um, how am I going to do this with you there? Let's see. Show me how you do it. I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to do it over here. Okay. Okay. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come through the middle and I'm going to do a finger wave. Right there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut into it right here a little bit. And I'm going to cut into the bottom of the finger wave very strongly right about there. So what happens now is the hair will actually start giving itself a little bit more of a feeling. I'll take that one away. I'll do another finger wave. There's my wave. And I'll come in at an angle here from the cheekbone. But on the other side, I come in from the opposite eye to go along with that wave. Okay, now what'll happen is when that hair dries, she can actually fold it. And as you can see, it really makes a very nice soft feeling. That would be called the Dior bang. So you can see how that hair already mm -hmm. wants to go into that mm -hmm. little feeling. So we'll do that a little bit more on this side. One more time, bring in the finger wave. For those of you who don't do finger waves, practice, practice, practice. Bring that down, bring this one in a little bit stronger. There we go. Kind of like that. Here I'm gonna open this up. I'm just gonna go ahead and just channel into it. I think this is where it's going to be, where people are gonna say, excuse me, aren't you famous? Mm -hmm. She's gonna call me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Close your eyes. Just very gently, do the Bob Ross routine. <laughs> I don't know, I gotta get away from that. I'm gonna have nightmares, I swear. Kind of nice, right? Mm -hmm. I like it. You may stay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to get that finger wave from the other side. Yeah, sure. That's, that's going to kill me. That's so I'm going to come in finger wave this way, bring it back, cut into it, and of course cut into it. Just kind of play with that mm -hmm. a little bit. That worked. Connie suggested that you grow a Bob Ross row. Oh, you know what? I have a wig at home. I went, I went as Bob Ross when Halloween. <laughs> I did. You know what I loved about him? Not besides the fact that it, his, he was so positive, but I loved how simple he made things. He, he did. told you how easy it was, and exactly. then he showed you how easy it was. Yep. And that's yeah. what teaching's about, right? Yeah, I painted a fence with the brush he uses, and here I was spending all this money. You know, now <laughs> I'm using actually those brushes uh -huh. for hair painting. So oh. what comes around goes around. Interesting. Right? But yeah, he was, uh, he was a trip. And you know what the weird thing was? As kooky as I am, I changed my mind a lot. I watched, watched his show, and I actually, he made me calm down. I didn't need drugs. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, you were so mellow. Oh, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Billy. So much love for this. So I want to finish it up. And what I'm going to do is I think there's still some pieces on top. I think this can still go a little more chaotic. Um, let me just do this real quick freehand. And I will literally come in and just go ahead and chop some of that out just to give myself a little more playroom. I do love the length. I don't want to give her a peek at the top, but at the same time, I do want to play with it just a little more freehand by bringing my hand in, putting my fists together, and just coming in and just chipping out some of these pieces. You know, I found many years ago, I, I actually did purchase some of these texture blades and things like that, and I always find that I can get just the effects I want by the manipulation of the steel in my hand. Mm. And, you know, once I have a good blade that keeps its edge, um, and it's the right length for the job, I think as long as
longest I have, I think, is six inches or six and a half. But um, it just makes me feel better, you know? Here, and down just a little bit, it's a little heavy on her forehead, so I'm gonna just take that and kind of pick a fence into it, you know, just to finish it. You know, once the client, you can see the client in the mirror while you're doing her hair, and you get to that blow dry area, and she's already, you know, she's puckering her lips, she's giving that little daffy duck lip. You know, she's already three stages past Vegas, you know? <laughs> so you know she's loving it. Go for it, man. Put your mark on her, you know? Tell her that I do hair like this all the time. Please send me your friends. I used to say friends and family. Family's cuckoo. So I always ask for friends. You know, and just have a good time. Six weeks from now, you'll all be better. Luca's going, this guy's crazy. <laughs> Luca, you did a beautiful job on the makeup. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent work. This is actually Luca and my first time working together. Um, we're going to be kind of playing together when we do Naha, so that's where, oh, that's, nice. where the, that's where the coop comes out of the clock, you know? <laughs> and just be free form on the finish. You know, this has to be your, your mark and your signature, you know? Nobody else is going to do it for you. Well, once again, you know, we're here in Westwood in my new location coming hopefully in September. Um, we are moving. I am looking for a new team. We need assistants and hairdressers. Um, you know, I think always, I, I know there's a lot of ways to work at, in this world today, but I always believe that working with a team will teach you more and it'll help you become a better human being. And if it's, if it's too hard and you're too scared, then that's exactly where you need to be, mm. you know? Let people understand who you are and bring your skills to the table and work with others so they can learn for it from you. I think that's the key. You know, I, I have assistants that their eyes light up when they finally get a technique that I've been working with them for weeks with. And, um, you know, we have class every Wednesday morning. And um, it's, it's just a necessity. You know, people are hungry for education. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of promises in different businesses and in different companies. And I, I think that it's our responsibility to make sure that they succeed. And, you know, I'd love to have somebody talk about me when I'm dead, you know? But then again, I'm not dying, so it's okay. It's not no big deal. I'll be around. I'll help you. <laughs> but I think, you know, it's important. It really is. It's, it's something that, you know, we're, uh, we are a very unique animal as a whole. You know, we always, we want the glory and the fame, and I want to be like this person or like that person. And when you think about it, it's really not us alone. It's a team. It's always a team. You can never do it by yourself. It's impossible. You can, but then who are you going to show it off to? Mm -hmm. you know? I sit in my garage. I have a little bat cave with a workbench and I do some of my, my uh, photographic stuff and my competition stuff. And I, I finish something and I look around and I go, God, isn't this great? And there's nobody there. You know? like, the neighbors know I talk to myself. You feel good? I do. Yeah? Jeremy's ready to relocate. Uh, he, he asks where you are again. Um, you know, Jeremy, if you, go on, um, if you go on the website, you can also find us on, if you Google um, Salon Platinum Black in Brentwood or Los Angeles, you'll be able to find us and then go on our website and you can contact us there. Or you can actually contact what we said earlier. Just go to M.M. Haas on Instagram. Jeremy, this is such an amazing neighborhood and such a wonderful lifestyle to live here. Yeah, this is um, it's going to be super cool. And also, what really made a big difference for me is not only the events. They have, um, I'm using a little bit of um, the light oil, oil reflections from Wella. Let me get some out here. Um, the movie theater has events for openings of films. So this, this street in Westwood is pretty much known for all the activity. We have, uh, we're gonna have- um, uh, There's a college right here. There's UCLA. There is the um, farmer's market every Thursday from 12 to six. So you know, it brings attention to the neighborhood. Plus, Westwood does not have an upscale hair salon. 
So I gotta bring my attitude in a little bit, you know? Okay, and now I'm going to go in with some cocktail knee. It's a nice styling. It's going to, um, sorry, it's a little bit of a gloss. I actually wanna give a little bit more feeling and attitude to this. So now that I put that in, believe it or not, I'm actually gonna use some dry shampoo to fluff this up. I want the dry shampoo by Dry Me, by I Me, by Wella. I want that to give this even more personality. So basically, you could literally lead your life with dry shampoo and a little bit of... Um, Carol Turner's is bloody amazing. <laughs> What's that? Carol Turner's is bloody amazing. Bloody London? <laughs> Maybe. Thank you, Carol. And once again, is it a hairstyle? I think it's more of a feeling. Mm. You know, how does she feel? Does she feel good? Do I feel accomplished? Have I done my job? Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's on its way. You know, there's a f few things I would still mess around with. Let's go in with a little bit of the dry meat. Carol's in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas? Yeah. The home, the second home of big hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what are you using now? I'm using dry meat by Wella. Okay. And that's going to be the dry shampoo. I'm going to come in. I'm going to lift up. I'm going to come in quite tight. And I'm just going to come in on the base. I want to mess it up. I want to make, you know, it's funny. You have clients that come in and they go, God, I, you know, do you like your hair? And usually they say they love it. But they say, I really love it, but I'm going to love it even more tomorrow. That's what this is. That's where I'm trying to get to. I want to make it look like she already had, you know, been wrestling and, you know, had on a little black dress and... You know, she looked better than the bride, and, you know, all that, whatever goes with that, you know? Uh, I can't wait for your next color, it's going to be awesome. So now I'm going to come back in with a little bit more cocktail meat, just to finish off. And now we'll just address the ends just a little bit, just to thicken them up a little bit. Seems like it would go wherever you want it to go now. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Amazing, huh? yeah. I think she's going to have some bounce in her step. I think so. Do a little bit of that wave. And then slender this out a little bit. I'm going to come right in front of you and just make her more skinny. Fantastic. I'm reading uh, comments. Love, love, love this from Jeremy. Donna says, fantastic. Uh, just one of the other. Carol says, beautiful haircut. Um, also, she said, bloody amazing. And people are telling Jeremy to move out here. <laughs> <laughs> so you already have friends, Jeremy. <laughs> You know, putting your signature on it, just a little bit of turnkey here, you know. And yes, what we were gonna do, we were gonna do a thicker, almost China doll fringe, right? Look how that's changed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, but why not? Mm -hmm. You know, you just gotta have a little fun. And Charlotte says, suits your face shape, what an artist. I think that's a great place to close. I think so too. Thanks everybody for joining. It was a pleasure. Have a great day and Keep knocking it out. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Thank you.